Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum and today we will be looking at the bones of the thorax. We will be looking at the different bones of the thorax. So, this is the thorax. This part of the body is the thorax. And inside of the thorax, where I placed my hand, we have the thoracic cavity. The thoracic cavity. So this is the thorax. In the thorax, we have the thoracic wall. This is the thoracic wall that you can see here. And we have the thoracic cavity, which is the, the space inside of the thoracic wall. So having understood what we mean by the thorax, let's look at the bones that are found in the thorax. We have the first bone, which are the ribs. The rib, the ribs. We have the second bone, which is the sternum. The sternum. And we have the third bone, this one that is inside at the posterior. This one at the posterior. You can see it. The vertebrae, the vertebrae, the vertebrae. So, we we'll first of all take the vertebrae. Uh, we will see the vertebrae first, then see the sternum second, and see the the rib or uh, Let's take the rib first. Let's take the rib first. So, in the thorax or in the human body, we have about 24 ribs. We have about 24 ribs, or you can say that we have 12 pairs of ribs. We have 24 ribs or 12 pairs of ribs. 24 ribs or 12 pairs. Then the rib forms the thoracic wall. The rib forms the thoracic wall. As you can see here, the rib forms the thoracic wall. It contributes to the formation of the thoracic wall. And coming to the rib now, having understood that we have 12 ribs on each side, on the left side we have 12, on the right side we have 12. From rib 1 to rib 7 is referred to as the true rib. The reason why rib 1 to rib 7 is referred to as the true rib is because the first to seventh rib joins or attaches or articulates with the sternum. You can see it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 have a direct attachment or direct articulation with the sternum. So they are called the true ribs. We have the true ribs. Then we also have the false rib. Starting from rib 8 down to rib 12. This is rib 8. Down to rib 12 is called the false rib because they do not have a direct attachment to the sternum. Rather, they attach to other rib. You can see it attaching to other rib. So they do not have a direct attachment, and that's why they are called the false rib. The true rib is one to seven. False rib is eight to twelve. Then we also have the floating rib. Or the free rib. 11 and 12 is referred to as the floating or the free rib. You can see that they have no attachment or they have no uh, articulation. It is floating freely. So that's why they are called the floating rib.
Then, having seen this, you can you notice that the rib cage is made up of both the rib bone and the cartilage. You can see the rib bone at the lateral part. You can see these bones at the lateral part. But when you come to the medial part, as it is approaching the sternum, you notice that it changes to a cartilage. And these cartilage are called the costal cartilage. They are called the costal cartilage. Costal cartilage. They are called the costal cartilage. As it approaches to the sternum, it, it continues as the costal cartilage. So these are the costal cartilages. Then, having uh, known that about the rib, you notice that from one rib to another rib, there are spaces. From one rib to another rib, there are spaces here. You notice spaces here. From one rib to another rib, there are spaces. These spaces are referred to as the intercostal space. You can see all these spaces here. From one leaf to another, they are referred to the to as the intercostal space. The intercostal space. Then, having understood that about the reed, let's look at the let's look at the sternum. Let's look at the sternum. So, this is the sternum. This bone at the midline here now is known as the sternum. And the sternum have about three parts and other features that are found in it. The first part of the sternum is this part, this upper part or this superior part is referred to as the manibrium of the sternum is referred to as the manibrium of the sternum this upper part or the superior part then we have this part here this is the body of the sternum this is the body of the sternum you can see the manibrium on top here then this is the body of the sternum then there is another part that is inferior that is like a a process that uh, came out from the sternum. You can see it here. This part here now is referred to as the xiphoid process of the sternum. So the different part of the sternum we have the manibrium. We have the body and we have the xiphoid process so these are the three parts of the sternum the manibrium the body and the xiphoid process then there is another part of the sternum at the middle here at the superior part of the sternum at the middle here you notice this depression here you can find this depression here you can find this depression here so this is it it is known as the jugular notch it is known as the jugular notch so this is the jugular notch of the of the sternum then we also have Another notch at the both side here and the here that gave articulation or that articulates with the clavicle. This part that is depressed at both sides that articulates with the clavicle, it is known as the clavicular notch. So why the one at the middle is known as the jugular notch, the one at both sides are referred to as the 
clavicular notch. Having understood that about the sternum, then let's look at the, the vertebrae. Let's look at the vertebrae. So, this is the vertebrae. We have the cervical, the thoracic, the lumbar, and the, and the sacral, or the sacral vertebrae. So, this is the one that is, that is, or that lies in the thorax, is the thoracic. Eh? The thoracic. The ending part of the cervical and the thoracic are the one that lies within the, within the thorax. Then, if you look at the vertebrae, you notice that from one vertebrae to another vertebrae, there is this cartilage. There is this cartilage-like structure that is found in between them. From this to this, you see this structure here. From this to this, from this to this, you see this structure. So, this structure or cartilage-like uh, cartilage structure that is found in between vertebrae is known as the intervertebral disc. It is known as the intervertebral disc. Is known as the intervertebral disc. So, having seen the fissures of the of the thorax, ranging from the thoracic wall or the thoracic cage, the the rib, the sternum, the thoracic cavity, and the vertebrae, let's look at the joints that are found in the thorax. The joints that are found in the thorax. We have the first joint. Here, you notice a joint between the bone, the rib rather. You see the rib, the bones of the rib, and the cartilage, and the costal cartilage. There is a joint that is formed between them, between the bone and the cartilage. There is a joint that is found between the cartilage, costal cartilage, and the bone. This joint is known as the costochondrial joint. It is known as the costochondria joint. Costochondria joint. Then we have the second type of joint, the joint that is found between the costal cartilage and the sternum. Between the costal cartilage, you can see it's formed at this particular spot, between the costal cartilage and the sternum. It is called the sternocostal joint. It is called the sternocostal joint. Then, we have another joint that is found between the manubrium and the body of the sternum. This joint is here. Between the manubrium and the body of the sternum, this is the joint here. You can see this particular spot here. This joint is known as the manubrosternal joint. It's known as the manubrosternal joint. It's known as the manubrosternal joint. Then the Last joint is the joint that is found between the xiphoid process and the body of the sternum. You can see this joint here. It is referred to as the xiphi sternal joint. It is referred to as the xiphi sternal joint. So, having seen the joints that are found in the in the thorax having seen the joints that are found in the thorax we also know that the vertebral the vertebrae also form a joint from one vertebrae to another the intervertebral disc connects one vertebrae to another so it is a joint on its own then from this 
é, margin now. From this coastal cartilage to the next coastal cartilage, like this, from here to here. This margin is referred to as the coastal margin. From here to here, it is referred to as the coastal margin. Then, if you see the coastal margin, there is a joint, or rather, there is an angle, rather. There is an angle that is formed between the xiphoid process and the coastal cartilage at this point. And at this point. At this point, and at this point, there is an angle. An angle like this. That is formed between the coastal cartilage and the xiphoid process. This angle is called the infrasternal angle have or the subcoastal angle. Another angle here. Another angle. There is a pro, uh, there is a protrusion here, which is referred to as the sternal angle. Which is referred to as the sternal angle. So we've come to the end of this teaching, where we we saw the bones of the thorax. I showed us the thoracic cage, and these three bones makes up the thoracic cage. And I also showed us the thoracic cavity. We saw the rib, the sternum, and the vertebrae. So. Then for the rib, I told us that we have 24 rib or 12 pair of rib. And I also told us that we have the true rib from 1 to the 7th is the true rib because they have direct attachment to the sternum. I told us that we have the false rib from 8 to 12 because starting from 8 now have no direct attachment. They rather attach to the, to the other coastal cartilages or to the other rib. Then I told us that we have the floating rib, the 11th and the 12th rib, because they have no articulation. They are freely hanging, and that's why they are called the floating rib. Then I also made mention of the coastal cartilage, which is this, as the rib bone approached towards the sternum, it continues as the coastal cartilages. Then I told us of the intercostal space, the space between one rib to another rib. The space between one rib to another rib at the intercostal space. Then we move to the sternum. I told us that we have the manibrune, the body, and the xiphoid process in the sternum. Then I also showed us the jugular notch and the clavicular notch. Then I showed us the, the joints that are found in the, the sternum. Then uh, that are found in the thorax, rather. I showed us the this joint here, from the manibrum to the body, which is the manibrosternal joint, I showed us the joint between the rib bone and the rib cartilages, or the rib bone uh, and the costal cartilage. I told us that it is called the costosternal joint. And then the phenocostal joint, rather. Then I told us that the joint between the body of the sternum and the and the costal cartilage is known as the sternocostal joint. Then I also made mention of the costal margin here. I made mention of the costal margin and I also talked about the zivisternal joints also. So we've come to the end of this teaching. Please do well to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Chisum Great. Try and like this video. Comment and please share this video. Thank you very much.